Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we see the return of an old favourite of mine. I've not done a codec puzzle for quite a while, and codec is one of my very, very favourite setters, so I'm delighted to see... <coughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm coughing. I am delighted to see uh, the return of codec in the form of herringbone, which is the name of this puzzle. And uh, I think even I can work out why these... It does actually look like the sort of bone you would get in a herring. Um, uh, I am always absolutely appalling at eating boned fish, so we'll ignore that, and hopefully I'll be better at solving a Sudoku involving a boned fish. Um, I'll read the rules to this one in just a moment, just to say apparently this is an absolutely brilliant puzzle. So, I mean, we might ex expect as much from somebody like Kodak, but be rest assured, this is something of a masterwork. Um, now, what do I need to tell you about today? Well, the first thing is, so we need to talk about a bit more about this puzzle, which is an incredible, incredible puzzle. Uh, hopefully you can just about see the number in the top right-hand corner of the puzzle. Two Truths and a Lie by Zetamath. Now, I recorded my solve of this the other day. I mentioned this in yesterday's video, uh, intending to put it up as a bonus for our patrons on Patreon. If you are a patron, thank you so much for supporting the channel. You make you make the world of difference. Um, and th that the, uh, the reason... I was going to put it on Patreon was because it has a very, very long rule set, especially if I was to explain every element of the rules rather than just saying it's got standard Renban rules or standard Arrow rules. And we do try and make our videos accessible to everybody. So a completely new viewer could look at a Cracking the Cryptic video and understand the puzzle that they're being presented with. So. I was worried, and well, as, as, as were others, that it would have taken us about 15 minutes to explain all the rules to say to maths puzzles, so it seemed more appropriate to put it on, on Patreon. However, this puzzle is unbelievable. It's just a sensationally good puzzle. You can play this puzzle right now. Just click the link under this video and you can have a go at it. Uh, the rules are explained in some detail uh, in the panel to the right of the puzzle, but not in full detail. So you, you will have to sort of, if you don't know what a German whispers rule is, you will have to look that up elsewhere. Do have a go at the puzzle. Uh, it looks like from the comments yesterday, you're all fairly desperate to see see my video appear on the channel. And I think that we're probably going to do that in the next few days. So uh, I may release it for patrons early, um, but I think it will appear on the channel at some point and I want to actually pay particular or say particularly thank you to some of the patrons who commented on yesterday's video saying that they understood you know they they paid for the extra content uh, but they would be they agreed with me basically that puzzles like this need to be seen by a million people um, and um, not not just the patrons of the channel so um, I think that's brilliant people like Steve Pinard Alan Taylor thanks so much for dropping a comment in um, that made us feel a lot more comfortable um, now what else Oberdin Oberdin we're going to have another crack at this on Monday night the only warning there is um, that some of the imagery is fairly extreme. So if you are sensitive um, to anything really, uh, certainly anything violence orientated, uh, I'd avoid that stream if I were you. It's it's not for the squeamish. Um, and yeah, children might also want, want, to, want to steer clear. Um, other than that, oh, I tell you, I've got, I've got important news as well. Tomorrow the clocks go back, or overnight tonight the clocks go back in the UK. So tomorrow night's video, if your clocks aren't changing tonight, it will appear an hour later than you're expecting. Um, so just to bear that in mind, if you're looking for a video um, tomorrow and it's not there, it might just be that the British clocks have changed. And that's all I've got to tell you about. Let's get back to um, let's get back to herringbone, and I can read you the rules for this one. So. What have we got? We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Um, so those three squares there sum up to 20. Still, still can't quite shift this cough. Um, along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end. Well, OK, now this is something of a joke, isn't it? Because we just have a series of very tiny, short, stubby thermometers in this grid. And all we're being told is that this square, let's make it a three, this cell here has to be higher than the bulb end. So it's, it could be anything. It could be four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. 
Now, normally in thermo Sudoku, you get great big long thermos that you can actually do things with. But even Mr. Goodliffe, I think, would struggle to justify pencil marking a thermometer. Uh, well, how would it have to look? Six, seven. Ah, no, I've missed out digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was how each one of these thermos has to look at the start of the puzzle, which does not seem to be terribly helpful. Um, Grey lines without circles are palindromes i.e. the digits in both tips are equal. So here, we know those two cells are the same. Those two cells are the same, etc. Um, which is also, uh, well, doesn't seem incredibly helpful at first blush. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. So the first thing I can see is that 17 cage. 17 in two cells must be an 8-9 pair. Now, the 18 cage here. Unfortunately, that doesn't need to have an 8 and a 9 in, or 8 or a 9 in it. It could be 5, 6, and 7. So, otherwise we could lock this square in as an 8 or a 9. And that would project an 8 or a 9 over there by Sudoku. Which... I don't know, actually, that might not be terribly useful, even so. Another 18 cage here. 20 cage. Uh, a 20 cage does have to have an 8 or a 9 or both in it, because 5, 6 and 7 obviously add to 18 only. Good grief, there is really not much in this grid, is there? How can this possibly solve? So, I'm not at all sure what even to look at here. I'm tempted to highlight some of these palindromes and just, uh, just stare for a minute or two at whether or not we can see meaningful restrictions. So obviously all of these, well, because all those digits must be different, we can highlight these in four different colors because we know that the digits are obviously different in each case. Now, can we project that somehow to the palindromes at the top of the grid? So this one can't be purple or green because this cell sees purple, this cell sees green. But here's, I think, where we're gonna hit a problem because it's absolutely possible for this pair of digits to be blue or orange, or indeed several other digits. <laughs> no, this is not right, is it? Okay, hang on. Um, let's get rid of the coloring here and think again. So, I've got two more thoughts. <laughs> I've got two more thoughts only. The first thought is about ones and nines in, well, in this row, this row, this row and this row. The second thought is whether there's something set related going on. So I don't like the look of a set related trick here. So what I was thinking was if I highlight all of the rows that have, you know, shenanigans going on in them, if we highlight all of those four rows, that's four sets of the digits one to nine. Now maybe so now what I want to do is to highlight some cells that where I delete useful things. I'm not going to get anything out of this, I don't think. I was wondering about delete. So if I highlight these four boxes in blue, so the blue squares are also four sets of the digits, one to nine. Um, so if I delete commonly colored boxes or cells, it's still true to say that the blues and the oranges contain exactly the same digits. No, this is not, this is just absolute nonsense, isn't it? This is nonsense. In fact, if I am going to do set, what I'd be better doing is what I did the other day and try and get the palindromes into different sets. So if this cell was in a different set to this cell, then I could cancel them out of both colors. 
Yeah, okay. Um, okay, that's given me another idea. But I'm, but I'm, I'm more intrigued, actually, <laughs> by the idea about ones and nines. So I'm going to have a quick look at that, and we'll revert to that other idea if this doesn't work. So... Um, so what I was wondering is the only thing that's very interesting, I suppose, about thermometers of this length is that they do restrict the positions of ones and nines. So I obviously can't put a nine in any of these four bulbs because then I'd have to put 10 in the thermo end. So that means in this row here, the nine is restricted to one of those five cells, I think. four of which are on palindromes. Okay, let's do the same in this row then. I don't think they are going to align those. So if we look at where nine can go in row seven, it can't ever go in the bulb. So it can go in five, cell, five cells again. And we're not going to get enough coordination, I don't think, to actually limit these nines at all, are we? Like this cell, for example, if that was a nine, and you couldn't have a nine here because it would reflect into this cell and clash. You couldn't have a nine there, it would reflect there and clash. But you could have a nine here, and then you'd have a nine here. Ah, that's quite interesting. You can't have a 9 ever on this one, look. You can't have two 9s there because that's going to break the 17 cage. So that's never a 9. Sorry, I didn't see that before. So if there is a 9 there, you've got to have a 9 in one of two places in row 3. This is... Just, <laughs> sorry, I'm not getting anywhere, am I? This is not, I don't think, how we need to approach this. Let's just check ones. Now, ones obviously aren't restricted in the bulbs. Ones absolutely, they sort of, they love bulbs. But ones can never go at the end of a thermo. So ones in row, um, in row four have to be in one of those cells. And a one in the 18 cage would be interesting because that would force it to be one, eight and nine in some order. One's in row six. The problem is the herringbone's too long. You can't get, you know, I can't do anything with this cell because it's possible that digit can appear over here and it's not restricted. Um, all right, let's go, let's go back to what I was wondering about before. So my thought was, what about if I just try and put these digits here in di oh in fact is it maths ah right it might be a combination of the two right let's look at row three row three i'll just highlight in in orange and i'm going to highlight row four in blue so we know that this is a set of the digits one to nine we know that this is a set of the digits one to nine, but we know those two cells are the same. So if I remove these two cells from both colors, we know that the blue digits and the orange digits are still the same digits. I can obviously do that for every palindrome. So these cells here in orange are the same digits as we've got in blue. But now, Well, these, these are definitely not the same, are they? Because each one of these on the bulb. Oh yeah, no, okay, right. So I'm not sure about, I mean, it is true to say that the orange digits and the blue digits are the same, but it might be more interesting to think about the maths of this because what do I mean by the maths of this? Well, this digit here, has to be greater than this digit by at least one. So the, if we just look at the blue tips, these four blue tips 
are definitely greater by at least four if we were to add up the four bulbs and add up the four blue tips the blue tips would add up to at least four more than the orange would would add up to the orange bulbs so that means in order to make sure that these add to the same numbers because they're the same digits they must add to the same numbers this cell here must be at least four less than that digit so that digit there cannot be that high it's a maximum of five ah yes right this is interesting right so this digit here we know has to be four or more less than that digit so that digit's got one two three four or five written all over it this digit has to be four greater than that so if this was a minimum of one this would be a five five or more so those are the options for these but look doesn't this work the same way here as well i think it does i think it does yes it does it does we get the same restriction on this square look look look, look, look. let's do the same thing again so now in we can delete everything on the palindromes because they're just the same numbers so we now know that the purple digits are the same as the green digits now this cell here has got to be at least one more than that one this cell has to be at least one more than that one so again these four purple squares are at least four greater than the green bulbs which means that because these are the same digits because that in total the purple digits are the same set of five digits as the green digits we know that this and this have to be at least four different from each other which means this square is one two three four or five this square is five six seven eight or nine in fact it can't be six i can see that um i've got to get rid of that six there it's going to bug me otherwise um but now look how on earth are we going to make the 18 cage work we're going to get a nine here because the maximum I could make these two digits now combined is a four five pair and four plus five it must be because that's the only way we can put a Sudoku digit in here that's going to get us up to the 18 total that is beautiful that's really clever isn't it it's really clever um, now now we know yeah so now these are an eight nine pair aren't they because this is at least four so this is a minimum of eight and the same is true for this one so actually that's reduced whoa 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 that's reduced to being an eight nine pair but uh which means that's a three or a four but i'm just thinking that's we can go further than that because these these digits here are actually paired up because what you can't do is put a four here and a nine here um whoa sorry if you do that you've now got five you've got five here and eight here and they're only three apart but we know the thermos must differ by four at least so actually wherever the four goes um wherever the four goes you're going to have to have an eight and wherever the five goes you're going to have to have a nine so these squares have a relationship uh, it's a sort of long distance relationship but they don't see each other very often but they do still have a connection and it's quite a strong one um, hmm so what does that mean <laughs> uh, so that is an eight or a nine that's going to pair up with one of these digits and put an eight or a nine in those three cells hmm okay uh well that feels like it's the break-in doesn't it that's so beautiful it's obviously been designed by codec to be this way oh ah no in fact let's what i said was these have to these the long distance relationships between these digits is crucial because they are four apart exactly because they can't be more than four apart or the other long distance relationship gets broken so these are in sort of a an interesting four-way relationship with each other because those have to be four apart and those have to be four apart 
because if these were five apart, these would be three apart and that would break the thermos or the herring bones. So as they're both four apart in each case, that means each thermo in their rows is one different. The tip is one different exactly from the bulb because that's the only way we can keep these differences down to four each time or the differences between those two cells. So, so each bulb is exactly one less than each tip in both this in both of these relationships here and that must mean so actually let's just think about this so if this was nine I feel like, and this might be nonsense, I feel like this, these have to be a consecutive sequence now. Because, I mean, that's true, isn't it? Because now I've got a problem. Well, not a problem, but I've got an interesting question. Where does nine go in, the, in this row here? Because nine can't go now on a palindrome square. Because if you put nine in a palindrome square, it's going to reflect down here and clash. So if this is a nine, if this is a nine, you have to put nine in a bulb in row row four. And if you put nine in a in a not in a bulb, nine in a tip in bulb bo in bo uh, in row four. And if you put nine in a tip we know that it's one different from the digit you put in its bulb. So you've got to put nine in one of those, and then you've got to put eight in one of these. But the moment you do that, you've now got a problem with the palindromes and eights, because you now can't put eight in a palindrome in, in row four anymore. Because if you do, it comes down here and stops there being an eight in the bulb where there must be one. So now you have to put eight in a tip yeah, so this is going to keep going, isn't it? So now you've got to put, once you put eight in the tip, you've got to put seven in a bulb. Once you put seven in a bulb, you can't put seven in a palindrome, so you've got to put seven in a tip, nori nori, which means that you've got to put six in a bulb. Now this needs to stop somewhere because otherwise we're going to end up with a contradiction. So it should stop very soon. Six in a bulb means that we need to put six in a tip because we can't put six on a palindrome, which means we need to put five in a bulb now it needs to stop and it does yes it does because now if we think about the logic we've been employing we've been saying it's not possible at this point to put five in a palindrome that is true but now it is possible to put five somewhere in row four that is not on a on a thermo you can put it here and in fact we would put it here because we know that the difference between these thermos is always is a total of four and we've now done that with a nine eight pair an eight seven pair a seven six pair and a five four pair so this is a five and it's sort of proved and we and we get one twos threes and fours so we get exactly this that's absolutely incredible isn't it that is incredible now this is all predicated of course on this being a nine which it might not be. This could be an eight and that could be a four. In fact, let's do that because everything we've done there is not, uh, you know, it didn't rely on anything other than the logic in those two rows. So, so if this nine, what I mean by that is that if this nine did turn out to be here, the logic we've just done would still absolutely apply. All that would happen is you get a nine here, a five here. These would be a one, two, three, four. These would be one, two, three, four palindromes, and then you get uh, five, six, seven, eights in the bulbs, nine, eight, seven, six in some order in the tips. But if this is eight and this is four, what happens instead? So now the now the challenge is to put eight up here because you can't put eight in the palindrome squares again. So you'd have to put eight in a tip. If you put eight in a tip, you're gonna to have to put seven in a bulb. Oh yeah, okay, so it's going to be the digits between the four and the eight that end up on the thermos. And you're going to get ones, twos, threes, and nines, I think. 
on the palindromes. Let's just we'll work through it though because it's quite it's quite fun, frankly. So seven in the bulb means you can't put seven on a palindrome anymore. So you have to put set in this row. You've got to put seven in a thermo. Once you put seven in a thermo, you have to put six in a thermo because we know that the difference can only be one each time. Now, once you put six, you've got to put six in a bulb in the tip, which means you've got to put five in a bulb. And that means you've got to put five in a tip. And that means you've got to put, oh, hang on, I think I pressed the wrong thing there. I want to put five in. And now you've got to put four in a bulb. And now you can't put four. Well, now, now you've run out of room to put four in the tip. You can't put four in the palindromes, but you've got the four here which is its escape route. So the four escapes, you do end up with one, two, three, nine on the palindromes. Right, so we're gonna to have to remember this. So, <laughs> so, is there a way of telling which way up these go? Because it could be flipped on its head. That is going to be tricky to work. We've got. To, I think we've, we're just going to have to remember. I think because I don't think I'm certainly not going to sort of assume this is correct and go from here because that would be heavy bifurcation. But it's so where you get the eight and the four, you have to put one, two, three, nine on the palindrome. Let's remember that. And where you get nine and five, you've got to put one, two, three, four on the palindrome. Right. I can remember that. I can remember that. So let's delete all this. All this can go. We can probably get rid of the colors as well, actually. So we can just do a complete reset. Um, complete reset. Now, we know that they're a four, five pair. That we are comfortable about. I know that they're an eight, nine pair. That I'm comfortable about. But we have the challenge I suppose of trying to work out which of these is eight and nine and indeed whether any of that logic we've just done actually tells us the order so the nine No, sorry, I realize I've just stopped talking. I'm just trying to think the nine goes with one, two, three, fours on the palindromes. And the eight. Well, okay, so if that's an eight. Yeah, okay. I'm just, I'm wondering about this being an eight because that, I know I can rule out nine from that palindrome and I can actually rule out nine from that palindrome. Let's just check that then. So if that's eight, now we know these palindromes have to be made up of one, two, three, and nine. But we know this one is not nine because of this nine here. This one is not nine because that would rule a nine out of my 17 cage. So can we get rid of nine over here? That's, I think, the challenge. Ah, I can get rid of it from this one because that's a nine. Ooh, okay. So if this is an eight, that is a nine. Done it, done it, right. It's taken me a very long time, but I've done it. Right, this is wrong. Right, this is wrong. Yeah, but it is wrong because now by Sudoku, I have to put a nine in one of those three squares, but remember, where the nine goes, we've, we, we know that the palindrome numbers in, in these rows would be one, two, three, and four. I've got to put a nine on a thermo tip. Where is that going to go in this row? Where can I put a nine on a thermo tip? There is one available, which is here, but that cannot be a nine because if it's a nine, it has to be one different from its bulb. Bingo, bang, bang. You can't repeat eight in that box. It will not work. So, <laughs> We have now, well, now I think we have a massive breakthrough, don't we? Because we've now worked out that this is 
Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. That is not an eight. That is a nine. That, oh, that means I could have. That means I could have stuck with my earlier all my pencil marks. They were correct. So these have to be ones, twos, threes, and fours. Let's put them all back in again. These have to be fives, six, sevens, and eights. And these have to be six, sevens, eights, and nines. That has to be a five. That's a four. Um, now these ones, the palindromes have to be one, two, three, and nine. The pops have to be four, five, six, and seven. And these have to be, whoopsie, five, six, sevens, and eights. So as I can see there's some tidying up we can do here, actually. That can't be eight, which means that can't be seven. And that can't be four because of this four, which means that can't be five. So we've always got to remember that if we manage to do an elimination, we can do the other side of a thermo as well. That can't be four, so that can't be three. What? Oh no. <laughs> I was looking at that going, no, that doesn't look right. And indeed, it's not right because this is not a thermo, this is a palindrome. So if that's not a four, you've got to take four out of both. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, Okay, the problem is we don't actually have, even though even though the logic so far has been absolutely brutally brilliant, we have very few digits in the grid. We can get rid of five from that one, which means we get rid of six from that one. Oh, nine can come out of that one. That means eight comes out to that one. So that's down to six or seven. That means there's definitely a seven in this, on this thermo, because so it's either six, seven, or seven, eight. Can we do that? We got, we had another thermo we got down to two. Yeah, this one. So this thermo's definitely got a six. Yeah, here we go. That thermo definitely has a six on it. It's either five, six, or it's six, seven. Now, that means that any cell in this grid that sees both of the tip and the bulb of this thermo cannot have a six in it. So that square can't have a six in it because it would rule a six out from that thermo. So that's not six and that's not five. So now six in row four, look, can't be in those squares. So it has to be in those two squares. Whoops. They're both thermo squares. So five is in one of those two squares. Six, six is not here because there's a six in one of those which means that square is not five. It's definitely a five in one of those. Bobbins, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do. That's not nine, so that's not nine. Uh, that's not five, I suppose. That's not five, so that's not four. Five, six, seven is interesting. Because that's in it, that, well, it gives us this digit as the, oh, this must now be an eight or a nine because we can't put five, six, seven in the 18 cage. That would immediately rule out this cell. So now we know that there must be an eight or a nine in the 18 cage, and we know that by Sudoku it's there. Now, ah, you rotten thing. I was rather hopeful that was going to give us, well, given that we know there's an 8 there, we could have written 8 in here, but we can't because it is possible, apparently, that this cell is a 9. So that could be 9, and that could be 9, and that would be 9. 9 would be up there. Oh, you, okay, okay, sorry. Um... What on earth do we look at now? <laughs> I have not got a clue. That can't be a four. Okay, so that can't be a four. That's a palindrome, not a thermo. So that can't be a four either. We've got, oh, nearly got the bones of something there, haven't we? Four, five, nine. I think I've eliminated four, five, and nine from all the cells it could be. Nine, eight, and four. Oh, oh no, <laughs> no, no, no. 
20 cage just we just don't know I mean it could have a 9 in it it could have an 8 in it it could have an 8 and a 9 in it ah oh okay look I've got a quadruple 1 2 3 4 quadruple in this box here so they have to add up to 5 which means those have to add up oh that's beautiful oh my goodness me right here we go here is some logic to make you cry with joy this is oh, right this quadruple here one two three four quadruple but we know that this domino adds up to five now one two three and four add up to ten so i now know that this pair of digits add up to five as well which means by palindrome this pair of digits add up to five but we know that the one two three four quadruple in this row also add up to 10 which means those two squares have to add up to 5 and neither of them can be a 4 so that means that's a 2 3 pair and that means those two squares are not two. Oh, whoopsie those two squares are not a 2 3 pair so this is now a 1 4 pair this becomes a 2 3 pair that is just ridiculously clever Oh my goodness me, now you can't have an 8 and a 9 in there because you can't have a 3 in there as well. Um, this, that is, that's so clever. That really is amazing. Ah, now there's got to be a 4 in column 5 in one of those two squares. So you can see that because if you look at the positions of 4s um, in box 2, two and now look at the positions of fours in this box you've got this you can't put a four here and you can't put a four here so the four is in one of two places in row seven one of two places in row th row three and they're both in the same columns of the sudoku so we need to ask where we put a four in column five it's got to be here um unfortunately not necessarily there if that's a four, that would be a four, that would be a four, and you get you get a four here, you get a five here, and we'd be heavily into bifurcation. Ah, okay. So what is this two three telling us? Is it telling us I don't know. I feel like I feel there are two possibilities. The first possibility is probably the likely one, which is that I've missed a deduction involving Sudoku <laughs> in these rows. The other possibility is that there is something about the cages that we've not, either I've not looked at a cage correctly, or, I mean, I've not looked at this cage at all, but that's because I think it's got three options left. I can see it can't be one nine, but it looks like it could be two eight three seven or four six. About this cage then. So this cage now can't have an eight and a nine in it. Ah, right. Here, hang on. Here's something interesting. Can this cage not have a nine in it? If it's not nine, it's got to be five seven eight. That's the only way of making twenty in three cells if you don't use a nine. Well, that's not going to work because now these two cells can't be filled. That square would have to be a six and this would have no fill at all. So that's not a five, seven, eight triple. And that means there is a nine in that cage. And that nine must be in one of those two cells by our old friend Sudoku. So the other two cells here add up to 11 and they're not three, eight. So this is either four seven nine or it's five six nine which me ah aha okay so this oh that's a right yeah this is good this is good okay so this domino here it either can it definitely contains a nine and it either contains a four or a five depending on whether the nine is being joined by a four seven pair or a five six pair because you can't put four or five in this cell so this square has to be a six or a seven and now there's a six seven pair in column one which means this square is not six or seven and that's on a thermo bulb so that square is not seven or eight
Oh no, it's close, isn't it? It's not. It's close. Six, seven, eight. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Okay. No, we're still not there, I don't think. Six, seven pair down here. So we've got to put sixes and sevens into box seven somewhere. Ooh, hang on. Four. Where does four go in this box? I've not noticed that, but that's been available for ages, I think. Well, once we got it ruled out of those cells anyway. Four's got to go in the... Yeah, four's got to go in the 18 cage. So now the other two cells in this cage have to add up to 14. One of them is an eight, one of them is a nine, obviously. So it's either four, five or six into these squares because it's either four, five, nine or it's four, six, eight. Again, it's close, isn't it? Ah, but seven. Now where does seven go in this box? That's beautiful. Right, seven goes here. That's beautiful because it gives us that digit. That's an eight now by Sudoku again. So that's a seven. It must be one different from the, from it, from its tip. That's now a six, which fixes the 20 cage. This is just sublime. It is absolutely sublime. Now I've got a five here. That means that squares an eight. That means it's the bulb of a nine thermo. Now we've got Oh, we've got all oh we've got all sorts going on now well one thing i'm noticing is that that can't be eight which means this can't be seven and that means that's the seven in that box but also i could miss a lot of deductions here i think but look i've got an eight nine pair here so that's forced to be a seven that makes that a six that's now a six by sudoku which makes this a five now this squares a six by Sudoku, which means that's a five. So eliminate five from, oh, this squares a six, so that's a seven. Okay, let's try and do this then. So that's not seven, which means that's not six. That's not six or seven, so that's not, uh, that's not six. That's the digit we can delete there. So we end up with a four, seven pair there. Um, okay, now can we get take this any further? Yeah, but oh, we can get we can use that eight. That's going to make that square a nine. So that means these have to be a four five pair. They don't involve six anymore. The nine up here it goes up here nine five five four. No nope. four there though. We can still do a bit of Sudoku one two three triple to complete box one. That square's not a nine, so that square's not a nine, which we could see. I, uh, I think there's going to have to be some tidying up of pencil marks here. That square can't be a nine. I've got a one, two, three triple here now, which seems to suggest this square has to be a nine, which I'm very happy about. That means I, I exert the palindrome logic. That becomes a nine. Yeah, we could have got that by Sudoku as well, simply. Um, but we did it the complicated way, as it seems <laughs> is uh, common. Um, this five is giving me an eight there now. So that's eight, that's seven, that's four, that's five. That four is seeing this one. So that's a one, that's on a palindrome, that goes there, which means both of those have to be fours now. Good grief. So if we're doing really well all of a sudden. So now one comes out of there, which means one comes out of its palindrome equivalent. This square here, this square here is a one, two or a three by Sudoku, which gives us a one, two, three in this box, it makes this square a six. What do we need down here? We need to put an eight down there. So there's an eight in one of, the, oh, we've got an eight there. So that's an eight. This is a one, two, or a three. Wow. Okay, we've got a two, three pair, I've just noticed, in column five. 
Well, the one in one of those two cells in box three, I've still not used that 10 cage, which is now either 2, 8 or 3, 7 only. Um, don't know if we can do that. I can place 5 though. 5, 5, 5. Looking into box 3, that's got to be a 5. How many 5s have we done? Several is the answer. Um, 5 has got to be in one of two places in box 5. And I think also one of two places in box 8. This 9 is fixing my 9, 8 here. 9 and 8 go into the grid. It's got to go up there now. Nine as well. Yeah. Well, yes, I've, I can do all the nines. This. Yeah, this square here has to be a nine, which makes that square an eight. Oh, that's beautiful. OK, now where does eight go in this box? It's got to go in the ten cage. So that's a two eight pair. And that means that square is a three. That square is a three. Two and two go into the grid. We get a one three pair here. We remove two from those squares. That becomes a one three pair. That plonks a two down in the bottom corner. That becomes a one three. So that's not a two anymore. Good Lord. That's got to be a seven by Sudoku, which means that square is a six, which means that square is a six. That squares a seven, that squares a five, that squares a five. We need ones, twos, and threes into to this box. So that square is a three. It's only the only option. It sees one, it sees two. That gets us those twos. That gets us a one here. That fixes this as a three. That is a one. That is a three. <laughs> one and three go in the grid. Two and three go in the grid. One in the center. Okay, so those two squares are two and three. We can do that. And those are one, six, and seven. We can do the six, the one, and the seven. And the seven and the one, that should be a four. That should be a four. And we need, uh, we still need to do two and eight, look. So we've got to put a two here and we've got to put an eight there. And I think with a flurry of activity towards the end, we have solved the puzzle. Good grief, that is incredible. So that puzzle is just an Ah, it's just a masterpiece, isn't it? I mean, that 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 solves, and and the solve is so beautiful, and it's really clever. I mean, I don't know how I probably spent about fifteen or twenty minutes just having the wrong ideas at the start, but once you get the wrong idea, once you get the right idea, it feels right immediately. It's like ah, now I understand. Now I understand. There's a relationship between these cells and this eighteen cage. Locking the nine in here is beautiful. And that gets you thinking about these cells and these cells were the whole key to it. You have to understand that they have to, that they're doing something um, to, the, to the thermos and they're forcing a certain pattern into the palindromes and thermos combined. And it's just wonderful. And then there was another point later in the solve that was absolutely, yeah. I mean, imagine you're setting this puzzle and you've you've had the herringbone idea and you've worked that all out and it's working beautifully and you get to that point and you have the just the imagination to go, you know what I could do here? I could put this five cage in because that's going to create a quadruple here. It's going to make the solver realize those two have to add to five. And look, because of the other stuff that's in the grid, that forces the two, three pair there. It... <laughs> This is why Codec is Codec. It's just different class. It really is fantastic stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope, I hope you have a good Saturday and we'll see you again later on Cracking the Cryptic.